We're, we're talking about Joel chapter 3 today, but we've got to, we've got to go back just a little bit. You've got to understand that the Bible, when it was written, it was the, the verses and the chapters weren't there. I'm glad they are there, but the verses and the chapters was not there. The hinge point, the, the thing that we're talking about uh, in, in Joel, in fact, we find it in the entire Bible, but uh, Joel especially is one of my favorite, favorite verses. It's in chapter 2, and we're going to get to chapter 3 in just a minute. But chapter 2, he says, and it shall come to pass. This is Joel 2, 28. You need to mark this in your Bible. You need to read it. You need to call your daughter. You need to call your son. You need to call your grandchildren. You need to call uh, call your friends. You need to say, hey, uh, you, there's this guy, and he's reading the Bible, and this is what it says. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And that's just all I'm going to say about that. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We're not to, it, it, we're not to argue all of this. There will come a time where your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. In other words, old men, and I must be an old man because I'm looking back and I can remember the blessings of God in my life. And your young men shall see visions. Young men, I'm sitting right here looking across this camera at a young man, and he has a vision of not what only God has done, but what God can do, because he 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 assumes that he's got more more life than I have. So this is a generational thing. This is a a, a gender thing. It's it's for everybody. It's for everybody. God does differentiate. There are sons and there are daughters. There are men, there are women. There are young, there are old. And on my men servants, there are disadvantaged, there's the poor. And my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. God is pouring out his spirit right now throughout the entire world. And all over the world, people are coming to Jesus Christ in record numbers, despite the fact that in China, in Russia, in North Korea, in Iran, in Pakistan, all over the world, Christians are being persecuted, and now in the United States of America. They call us Nazis. When the Nazis hunted and killed us along with the Jews, they hate us, the world hates us, but God loves us, and he's going to pour out his spirit upon us, and all of us will be a witness for Jesus Christ because there's coming a time, even in the United States of America, when it's going to be against the law to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right now in Canada, it's against the law to use what they call hate speech, which is the Bible. Right now, it, it, all over the world, you can, you can go to prison, you can be fined, you can be be uh, shut out if you if you preach the gospel. Right now in the United States of America, if you speak speak out against abortion, the FBI will come to your house and put you in handcuffs and put you in prison. Now you think, well, that 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 is happening all over the world right now, and it's happening right now in the United States of America, and it's happening because the demons are in charge right now. But God says, relax, don't be afraid of those demons, you come to me. Get your eyes off the demons. Get your eyes off the politicians. Get your eyes off of the demonstrators. Uh, get your eyes off the people that yell and scream. Get your eyes on the people that are, uh, are saying, I want my, my rights, or it's not fair. No, nothing's fair, okay? That, that's a whole thing. We live in a sinful world and nothing's fair. So right now, remember, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all people, young and old, male and female, rich and poor, and those who receive my spirit will prophesy in Jesus', Jesus name. And as a result of that, we go into chapter 3 and we look at a, at a future blessing. What is that blessing? Look at uh, verse 18 of chapter 3. It will come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drip with new wine. That means the, the, the vineyards will just produce and produce. There won't be a drought. There'll be idea uh, uh, ways. There'll be plentiful food. The hills shall flow with, 
with milk and all the brooks of Judah shall be flooded with water and a fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord and the water and water the valley of Acacia, the house of the Lord. Egypt shall shall be a desolation, Egypt, uh, Edom a desolate, all the rest of the world, but the house of the Lord and the people of God will be blessed beyond measure and people will not be able to believe what God has done for us. So our God is Lord. Our God is God. Yahweh is God. Elohim is God. Adonai is God. Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our, 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 our ever, ever, everlasting Adonai, Elohim. He is with us as Holy Spirit, and we praise his name. So let's just, let's serve the Lord and get happy. Let's quit being depressed by all this stuff that's going on and let's get get joyful in the Lord uh, because he not only is acting, he is present and he's going to really bless you right now as a result of you being here. God bless you. Thank you so much.